So I'm going to give you some information about how to use LucidChart to create entity relationship diagrams. Uh, if you haven't already signed up for LucidChart, you can get a free account. Um, it's uh, quite a powerful tool. It's cross-platform. They are very good about not sending you a bunch of spam. So I would recommend it without any kind of reservations, really. I've been using it for some while. Uh, when you get signed up, the uh, the homepage looks like this. To create a new chart, you just click on New. Um, there's a bunch of templates that they provide, but I normally find that those probably are a little bit too specific um, or require some additional complexity that really isn't necessary for a simple chart like this. Uh, so instead, I would recommend you choose Blank Document, and you'll get a page it looks like this so here's kind of the field where we're going to do the, do the drawing and if you just choose that blank document they give you a collection of sort of standardized shapes that you can choose from uh, unfortunately this doesn't include the uh, shapes for entity relationship diagramming so you scoot down to the bottom of this window hit add shapes and you'll see here in the resulting list that there's an entity relationship shape section uh, you don't really need these other guys, so you can click them to get rid of them and have just the uh, the ERD shapes, so use selected shapes. So they still have some standard shapes here um, that you can use to kind of annotate your diagrams and stuff, but most of what we're going to be doing is here in the Entity Relationship section. And you can see that there's sort of various types of shapes that they have here, just a really simple Entity Relationship diagram. Um, box so the for the entity itself and its attributes um, and then there's variations on this that add some columns into the entity diagram and I generally prefer this one with the three column format and I'll show you why in a second what you do here is you just grab this and drag it onto the, the, the document and you get kind of a, a default number of fields um, I'm going to do a simple uh, voter database here so I'm gonna have a entity called voter and then the intention of these uh, these fields is indicated by these kind of default prompts so the key column has to do with whether it's a primary key or a foreign key or both the field name and then the field type um, don't get too bent out of shape about the specific types we're doing what we call logical design at this point we're talking about sort of just give give us the basic sense for what kind of information is in each of these attributes so we could use things like integer or number or string or character or something like that um, when we implement a database of course we have to come up with specific data types that work for the particular implementation language but in this context you can just kind of give a rough and ready version to give you some sense of what sort of information is going to be stored there so I'm going to start out by uh, defining this first attribute as a primary key and I'll just call it ID so that's just a synthetic key that's going to be created for us by the database when it's implemented and that will just be an integer um, because we're keeping track of voters, let's have first name, let's just say that that's a string, and now we're sort of clobbering uh, the fields because there's not enough room, so you can resize it, uh, by, by dragging the corner handles, and you can also resize the individual columns by dragging those handles at the top. And then uh, we'll also have a last name, and that's a string. So. We don't have to be too specific about you know how many characters in the string or anything like that. This is going to be completely sufficient for this uh, for this purpose. Um, and then let's also keep track of where a voter is going to actually cast their ballot. So I'm going to drag another one of these entity guys out, and I'll just make that a little bigger because I know it's going to require that. And let's just call this one polling place. And again, we'll have a primary key that's going to just be a synthetic key, an integer that's created by the database. And I'll say integer. And then, uh, so a polling place, let's say it might have a name, like it's the church or the school where you're going to vote. Um, that'll be a string. And it's going to have an address, also a string. Um, now we're, we're chalk out of fields at this point. So you can, uh, when you select this, you can come up here in the in the toolbar and you can increase the number of fields that you want to have in a particular uh, particular entity so I'm gonna bump that up a little bit and then we're gonna also add a city string oops string 
and uh, maybe a zip code. And I guess I don't really need that last guy, so I'm gonna just knock this down to five. Okay, so now I have a voter, and I have a place where that voter can vote, but I need to be able to connect those two things together uh, because every voter is assigned a particular polling place that they're supposed to go to based on their uh, their address. So we need to create a relationship, which is, of course, the other aspect of an entity relationship diagram. So what we're going to do is create uh, a relationship between voter and polling place. Um, so because each voter has a, a uh, distinct polling place where they're supposed to vote, there's one voter involved in this relationship um, and one polling place. Uh, but because a voter can only vote in one place, it's one voter to one polling place. However, a polling place obviously can host many voters, so there's many voters per polling place. So we have a one-to-many relationship going on, which um, we know that when we make a one-to-many relationship, we have to have a foreign key from the many side of the relationship that refers to the primary key of the thing on the one side of the relationship. Uh, so in the many the many relationship or excuse me the many entity in this case is uh, the voter so we need to add a foreign key here which means we need another attribute so I'm gonna dial this up by one now this is going to be a foreign key because it's going to refer to a different entity uh, it's going to refer to the polling place so uh, what I like to do here is refer to the entity and then just say ID or whatever the primary key is of that other uh, at entity. So I'll say polling place ID and that's an integer because that's what our IDs are here. Again this is kind of overwriting itself so I'll make this a little larger. So now we have a voter uh, that has a, a, a location for the foreign key and the way you create these with uh, with these lucid chart uh, objects is you can just uh, hover over one of these little circle connector boxes and if you do it from the side where you want the one side of the relationship to, to be located, uh, first, it'll actually let you drag out a relationship line that has the one-to-many relationship already set up. So it's it's defined or it's it defaults to, to putting together a one-to-many relationship, which is far and away the most um, common kind of relationship you're going to put in your ERDs. You can actually make changes to that if you select that relationship line. You can see up here that we can change the endpoints of those lines. So if I wanna make this, I mean, there's a whole variety of different endpoints that they've defined for you here. But if I wanted to make this in a many uh, uh, endpoint, I can choose that and change the, the, the type of the, the uh, decoration on the ends of the lines. Um, but we can leave this alone for the time being. Uh, so now we have a, uh, a relationship that connects many voters to one polling place. Again, if you imagine my dumb little convention of you know thinking of standing on top of this entity and looking across to the other side of the relationship if I'm a voter over here and I look at the far side of the relationship there's going to be one polling place associated with me and that's going to be the one that's identified by the value of this foreign key whereas if I'm standing on top of the polling place entity and looking across the other side of the relationship, I can see that there's many voters that are associated with each of the polling places. And of course, that's you know also captured by the by the existence of this foreign key that has multiple voters potentially pointing to the same polling place. And you can decorate these if you want a little bit, like uh, some of the sample ones that I've sh shown in videos and whatnot. Um, I like to put a the, the sh a shaded header. And I like the alternate row coloring, so you can kind of uh, see what's going on in a more complex uh, ERD. Uh, and you can do that over here too. Uh, and then you can also change the color if you want. So the fill color, um, we get yellow. Over here we can make our voter um, uh, kind of purpley. So now I've got, I guess, a Taylor colored ERD. So that's basically the idea. Um, when you're uh, when you're done with your diagram, or at any time during drawing it, uh, Lucid Chart because it's it's a you know an online tool. It's really good about sort of saving your changes back to uh, to persistent storage on their servers. So there's not really a save function as such. Or if I think I think it actually shows up here. If they say save, it'll just tell you. Um, oh, because we haven't given it a, a title yet. Uh, so I can say something like um, vote voting ERD. Hit OK, and then uh, it gives it a particular name. And I think if you say save, yeah, it does tell you saved, but 
then if you hover there, it says all changes are automatically saved. So I think it's just there because people are paranoid. Um, <clears throat> so it's hard to lose the, the ERDs. When you're done with that and you're ready to uh, submit it for your assignment, uh, or in the case of the project later in the semester where you'll create another one of these if you want to share it with your compadres on your team, you can click the share menu here in the corner. And then um, if you click get shareable link, that's probably the easiest way to do this. Um, you can see that there's a, a variety of um, ways of sharing this information. So the default that's showing up here is that anybody that has it can edit and share this. But if you drop this guy down, you can see that you can share it for editing, for commenting, or for just viewing, kind of a read-only share. Uh, I would recommend that um, when you share the your solution with me or with your with your team that you do this one with the, any any one with a link can edit and share. So if if I want to you know give you some comments on your ERD, this would be the easiest way for me to do that. I can just kind of come in here and make some changes and and add a few notes if necessary. So you just say uh, copy link, and that copies the link to your clipboard, and then you can just paste that into uh, into um, Canvas. So that's how you do ERDs in LucidChart.